Ja, jag tror att vi är redo att köra igång. Klockan är strax efter sex. Vi, nu känner jag ju igen alla här. Nu känner jag mig bra av det. Jag har gått som arbetar med att investera i kontakter och mediekontakter för ett antal bolag inom med koppling till familjen Lundin helt enkelt. Så idag är vi här för att, att prata om Africa Oil och jag tror de flesta av er har hört om Africa Oil tidigare också som är bra uppdatering idag med nuläget och vad vi har gjort sedan vi sågs sist. Och förhoppningsvis återkommer vi med en sån här träff redan i slutet av maj någon gång, men vi kommer ju få en inbjudan till det. Jag vill också passa på att säga faktiskt innan jag lämnar över till Kipa att den 24 mars så kommer det vara en informationsträff för ett annat bolag med en koppling till familjen Lundin, nämligen Lucara Diamond, ett diamantbolag med verksamhet i Botswana. Det är klockan 18.30 och det är på näringslivets hus, så det är väl tillbaka till den vanliga lokalen kan man säga. Så att anmälan på precis samma sätt som till den här träffen. Så att ni, ni är välkomna då också att lyssna på presentationen om diamanten den 24 mars, som är måndag. Och med det så lämnar jag över till, till Erfogårds vd, Kiken. All right, thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, uh, How do you like the new venue? <laughs> Better? Worse? I noticed they put very large steel cages on the liquor, so we may need somebody who's already a locksmith in the house for a chance. No? Anyway, um, always good to see a, a good turnout. It's always uh, good to come back to Sweden and uh, see that everyone is still interested in Africa oil. Uh, I think uh, we haven't had any news out in a little while, and uh, we'll talk a little bit tonight about when news is coming out and what are the next real drivers. Uh, what I really want to talk about is kind of what the path forward is, uh, what we're planning to do this year, and kind of the, the further path forward. Uh, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, what maybe the what we're calling Africa Oil 2.0, which is uh, uh, Horn Patrol. I think uh, some of you have uh, been following Horn for a while. I think we're finally getting some traction in Horn, uh, not only in Somalia itself, but uh, it looks like we may have uh, uh, a new deal to put in there and uh, a couple more new deals on the horizon. So. Um, a lot of you know the story, that, that, that see a lot of familiar faces out there that have been with us since the beginning, and uh, it's good to see probably a, new, a few new faces in here, but uh, uh, we are very excited about Africa Oil, as, as those people who have seen this from the beginning. Uh, I have to say, if, uh, if I had a dream five years ago what we would have accomplished by this time, I never would have thought that we would uh, have found this much oil. Uh, and I think uh, the, the message I'm going to put out tonight is, it is only the beginning. We're just starting off here, and I think we've got a very exciting year ahead and a very exciting time ahead. So again, uh, most of you uh, uh, are familiar with this. Uh, obviously, the, the thing that gets everybody excited is, is this the size of this play. Um, you know, there's just not many times in your life you can go out and these basins of this size have essentially a, a, a portfolio the size of the entire North Sea. Uh, and the reason we were able to do that is we were the first ones in there. So uh, uh, we came in when no one else wanted to be in East Africa. We were able to sign up pretty much all the blocks we wanted, get very good contract terms with, with little competition. Um, because we did that, we brought in two good partner groups. Uh, first, Tello, and you'll see uh, just last week we announced uh, the deal with, um, with Marathon. We're just waiting on government approval. We brought Marathon down into one of our big Ethiopia blocks, and they'll be paying that way going forward. So a number of good partners, and the reason they came with us is Really, we have all the good acreage. Everybody wants to get into East Africa, but there isn't any good acreage left. Uh, so if they want to get into play, they have to talk to us. And uh, I think a lot of the, the big boys are, are learning that as well. They're still getting a lot of inquiries from uh, the bigger oil companies. Again, we have 11 basins that we've uh, uh, identified that we need to explore. Uh, we've drilled well so far in three of those basins. We've still got eight to go. Um, one of them has been quite successful, the Lokachar Basin. We've, we've been able to drill seven discoveries in a row there. Um, looks like we're going to be uh, having a number more uh, discoveries in that basin. Uh, we feel very highly confident that that basin is proven. Uh, our partner, uh, Tello, gives a quote of 600 million barrels of uh, uh, resources in that basin. We are just in the process of updating our resource report. It should be done around May 1st, so we should be able to announce those numbers. And I think um, we believe that 600 is probably going to grow uh, uh, because uh, and I'll, I'll go through a little bit of why I think that is. 
And as I said, I think the best news is to come. We've got over 100 prospects and leads identified. Uh, we've got eight more basins to explore. Uh, and uh, uh, I think it's uh, geologically uh, 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 very unlikely that all of these related basins, that only one of them would work, and less likely that we would come in and would drill that as our first basin. I think we have a very high expectation that at least one or two more of those basins is going to work. And we'll be drilling six of them in the next 12 months. In the next month, in the next 12 months, six of those un untapped basins will uh, we'll have wells in them, and we'll have some ideas about that. Uh, very strong, uh, uh, very heavy work program. We've got seven rigs working right now. We'll have at least six rigs working for the foreseeable future. Uh, big budget this year. Our budget's going to be about $750 million gross about 320 million net. So it's, uh, it's going to be a very active year um, uh, coming ahead. So again, you've seen this. This is most of the people have been here. This is still my favorite slide. I still want to put this up but for those of you who haven't seen it. Um, this is just taking our acreage here in the tertiary play and in the Cretaceous play and superimposing it on the North Sea. And what you see is that basically our acreage is the same size as the entire North Sea. Uh, whereas they drilled 2,400 exploration wells in the North Sea, we've only drilled 23. So you can see how, how uh, frontier this is. Uh, this, this, this is. This is like being given the entire North Sea and going out and exploring. Will those other basins be as good as the Lokachar Basin? Uh, only time will tell and only the drill bit will, will be able to tell us that. So really what we're trying to do in 2014, we really have three goals. The, the first goal is to get out and, and continue drilling in the Lokachar Basin. About two-thirds of our budget, um, four of our seven rigs are going to be in that basin for, the, for, for this year and probably the, the following year. And what we want to do is, is drill out all of the remaining prospects we've got. And I'll show you a map of what those are. So every prospect is a viable prospect. We want to drill by the end of next year. So we'll see the program to do that. We also want to look at uh, uh, appraising the discoveries we've got. So two of our rigs right now are, are, are drilling appraisal wells on existing discoveries, uh, step out wells, and I think that's going to add quite a bit of uh, um, contingent resources to our, um, our holdings. I think that's going to be a real value driver for us as well. Uh, we also have started the 3D seismic. We're about 20% complete on the acquisition. Uh, that will be a big tool for us to be able to image these reservoirs and, and try to understand the, the nature of these reservoirs a bit better. So again, I mentioned we'll have a third party report done in the second quarter around May 1st. Um, it will include all of our new discoveries at Gete, Kalas, Amasing, and Iwai, and will include some of these appraisal wells that we were able to drill during the first quarter. And then uh, lastly, we're, we're going to do an extended well test on uh, two of our fields. Right now, the plan is Gami and Makiga, and get in and do an extended well test where we can start addressing the uh, recovery factors and, and some of the longer term potential of the reservoirs. So that, that is a big part of our, our, our goal. Um, but the second one, if you're looking where your stock price is going to go up, I think the second one's probably more important for you. I think the market is getting, you, you saw the last couple of discoveries we made, I think it was up about 5% and within a week it's back down where it is. I think people, people are getting too used to us making discovery after discovery. Uh, I think we need to uh, open up a new base and get people uh, excited again uh, that, uh, that there's a lot more growth potential. So we still get excited when we make discoveries, uh, uh, but uh, the market, I think, is, is already giving us credit to be at a 100% success rate in the uh, Okachar Basin. So. Um, again, we've got a lot of seismic going. Uh, all the basins that we haven't shot seismic on, we will be shooting out this year and early next year. So we'll be ready to drill in every one of our frontier basins. Uh, by the end of the first quarter of next year. Uh, we're also spending a bit of time and, and money on the development project now. Uh, we, we're seeing quite a bit of uh, traction on this. So the Kenyan government that is quite supportive of this pipeline project. We have a number of companies from the Far East in particular that are looking to get into this pipeline project. Uh, we've had talks with the Ugandan uh, group uh, extensively. We've actually joined a consortium, a pipeline consortium, with Total Sima Tokolo to build a joint Uganda Kenya pipeline. And that is by far the best solution. I wouldn't say the government, uh, particularly Uganda, is 100% uh, there on that yet, but uh, uh, I think they're making progress on all fronts. And uh, 
uh, we think that Hoover has will prevail and that that will be the ultimate solution in a joint pipeline uh, uh, for the two countries. So to, to do that, we're doing all of the front end engineering design now, not on the pipeline, but also trying to look at the field facilities. We're doing an environmental social impact statement, uh, a route survey for that pipeline. And we have expect to have most of that completed by the end of this year. And now it'd be really just getting ready to really start doing some, some work on the development project. And the, the, the goal is to have it by the end of 2015. I put early 2016 there to be consistent with Fellow. Uh, we think uh, we, we're, we should be in a position by the end of 2015 to have project sanction. And we should be in a position by mid 2015 to really understand this project and have that, have, have it uh, where we can explain it to other oil companies who may be interested uh, uh, to, uh, to move forward with us. One of the other things we're spending a lot of time on this, this year, and I, I think uh, for those of you who read about our work stoppage last November, I think it was a little wake-up call for Fellow and ourselves that maybe we need to step up a little bit on community engagement. You know, the, 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 core, the core issue is, is, is really that first one. You know, everyone wants to make sure that they uh, enjoy the benefits of, of oil development. You know, the, the local people want contracts, they want employment. Um, we already employ 800 people and local Chicano people. We have by far the largest employer in the area, but there's 80,000 people that live there. So we're still only employing 1% of the population. And the other 99% want to see a path to where they're going to see some value out of this. So that's what we're, I'm spending a lot of time working on. Uh, one of the things we need to do is get capacity built. So we're opening a vocational training center there. Uh, we're going to start training people to do the semi skilled and, and, and then working on doing a the skilled positions and getting the local people essentially to take all of our jobs in the future. Um, but also um, looking at some of the entrepreneurial things. There's a lot of industries that may be springing up around the oil industry. Um, you know, things like bakeries, things like uh, um, uh, road building, car rental, uh, mechanic shops, all of those things are good opportunities for local businesses. So we're looking at some entrepreneurial uh, um, type of programs to do low cost loans or even micro loans to, to, to microfinancing to get some of the, these businesses up and running. So this is uh, something that I think is never going to be a, we're done with this. This is, this, is a, this is an ongoing thing that we're going to have to keep on top of all of the time. Uh, and I think this is the biggest risk to our project now if we don't keep the local community engaged and happy with us. I think this is probably the single biggest risk we've got in the project going forward. So we are very focused on it. Uh, most of you know I live in Nairobi and I spend most of my time on these types of issues. Um, one thing we need is better communication. I think people still out there, there are people that think we're secretly producing the, the oil and uh, that uh, we're selling it and not giving the benefit. Um, and, and there's a lot of rumors that go around uh, out there. Uh, there's a lot of expectation that we'll be producing oil in the next few months. You know, and it's, it's, it's realistically going to be three, three to five years before they see real oil production here. And I think we need to make sure that people understand that. But uh, we also need them to understand that they don't have to wait three to five years to start making money off of this. But the amount of money we're spending in country is going to give a lot of opportunities for, for, for local businesses. So I think we've opened offices in three areas in the Turkana Basin, uh, a place where they can come and get information, where they can see the transparent way we hire people, the transparent way we award contracts. And I think that's going to help a lot. The other thing we've been working on is getting our well costs down. Uh, our first well cost was have seen uh, $65 million uh, for the first well. And you'll see we're, we're starting to see a nice trend. All of these well costs are coming down, down, down. In fact, uh, Imam, the last well, looks like it's going to come for about $15 million. So uh, one, of the, one of the reasons it's coming down is uh, we're becoming more efficient in drilling. We've got our first well that's being drilled with, um, I'm supposed to use the word synthetic based mud, it's not actually oil based mud. Um, it, it's basically like vegetable oil. It's a synthetic oil that we mix uh, instead of fresh water. The reason that's important is if you look at this little thing on the bottom, this is a piece of clay that we took out from down below out of the core. If you put that clay in oil, it doesn't do anything. If you put that clay in fresh water, in five minutes it expands to about five times its original size. So that's the problem we've been having for a couple of reasons. You know, number one, in the well bore, when you put that fresh based mud in there, you get all these clays expanding into the well bore. And that's why we had to sidetrack Gamia, that's why we had to sidetrack uh, the, the well up in uh, Ethiopia, uh, the Sabisa well. Uh, so it's a very difficult, it makes the drilling difficult, but it also makes the valuation difficult. 
So this, these little clays, even in the reservoirs, will also expand and, and include the porosity. So now we've got Kiga 2 is the first well we drilled with uh, oil-based mud. Uh, we drilled up to 270 meters a day in that, and the hold condition is very good. Um, you know, I think we'll have every rig converted uh, by the end of this year to oil-based mud. Uh, it'll help us not only in drilling, help us in drilling in well costs, but also will help us in evaluation because it doesn't destroy the reservoir. Uh, we'll see basically the, the native virgin reservoir properties uh, that we'll be able to measure. So uh, it, it is, uh, uh, I think this is something uh, that we'll have to keep after. Um, you know, it doesn't, it, it's not inherently obvious, but if we drill, our, our plan this year is to drill about 20 wells. Um, we can drill 30 wells for the same amount of money. So um, our, our costs are pretty well fixed. We pay for the rig, we pay for the service company, we pay for the people. Um, and if we can cut down a 60-day well to 35-day wells, we can get uh, you know, 10 free wells, 15 free wells this year by drilling more efficiently. So that's the real goal, and, and, and uh, it, it's definitely worth doing. It accelerates the project, but it also uh, adds a lot of value to, to, to the company. So this is basically what we're planning this year for uh, expiration. Uh, all of these docks are expiration wells that are on the budget. Uh, as I said, I think there's going to be, uh, uh, there are appraisal wells uh, uh, associated with as well that we'll talk about. But uh, there is a chance to add more. I think if we can keep drilling efficiently and keep drilling at uh, the pace we're drilling, I think there's a good chance we can add another five, five to seven wells onto the exploration list. So, again, most of them are concentrated in the Lokachar Basin, where we're going to be drilling out uh, kind of the easiest ones uh, uh, left. We've already drilled Amasink and made a discovery. We've already drilled Ewoy and made a discovery. But then we're going to be stepping out into the new basins. The uh, Sala well is drilling now. It's actually dancing right on top of the uh, main objective now, so I think in a matter of two, three weeks, we'll be able to, to, to see the results of that well. Uh, Shamila, uh, the first well in what we think is probably the most prospective basin we've got last, uh, will spud next week. So we'll, we'll start seeing uh, some results of that probably within the next 30 days. Uh, it will just stay up here. It, it'll certainly drill Gardein, but I think it's very likely that we'll get maybe a third or maybe even a fourth exploration well up there in that basin this year. And it'll just stay there as long as we see encouragement. Uh, we're also going to drill the first one up here in the Turkana Basin. Uh, we're actually going to drill two wells this year, but the Kaboko is going to be the first one. We've selected that as our first target. Uh, and we'll go through these in a, a little bit more detail. And then the other one that, uh, that kind of flies under the radar, but um, again, we're quite excited about is the Karia Basin. So this is really, I would call it a sister basin to the uh, Lokachar Basin. It's right next to it. It looks very geologically similar. It should be the same age, same type of source rocks, reservoirs. And we've got two wells planned in here um, that uh, uh, both look quite, quite compelling. So again, the, the focus is going to be in Mokachar Basin where we've had our success. We've now drilled these five string of pearl wells, all successful. We're doing an appraisal well up dip into a separate fault block called Imam. Um, we're drilling a, our first development well here at Twiga 2. Uh, which is up dip from the Twiga discovery. We will be drilling the Agente appraisal. We'll be drilling at least two wells at Gamia to appraise. And uh, we've just added another appraisal well at uh, Amosing. Amosing is looking really good. Uh, it's probably the best reservoir we've seen as far as thickness and quality. And uh, it may kind of move into the number two position uh, or maybe even the number one position. So. Uh, the rig that's drilling at Twiga now, when it's done at Twiga, it's going to move down and it's going to do a down dip at the same well. Um, just because we basically think that is maybe going to be where our, our extended well test is going to be. Right now, the, the Twiga, Gamia, or Amasing is where we're going to try to drill at least three, ex three uh, appraisal wells and do some extended well tests. What we want to do with the extended well tests is three things. You know, we want to see the continuity of the reservoir over the field. We want to put the, and put it on production for a, a longer period of time, time and see how it uh, develops. We also want to see what we call uh, interference testing. So we will go and produce one well and see if we can see the effects of another well. That gives us a good idea how interconnected these reservoirs are. Uh, and then the final thing is we'll inject well water into these uh, reservoirs to see how well they take uh, injectivity, which is important for water flow. But also, we'll see the effect of that hopefully at our monitoring well as well. So, I think once we get the extended well test, 
Now, if people ask us why our numbers are different than Pogo's, our, our numbers are almost double what Pogo's are uh, when we talk about prospect size, when we talk about field size. And the reason is recovery factor, almost exclusively. You know, we don't have a big difference in area, thickness, uh, saturation, all of, all of the things that go into volume. What we do have a difference is the recovery factor. And we're assuming that water flow is going to work. Pogo is not using, assuming it is in their base case. They actually believe it is, but they they're, they're sort of a need to prove it to themselves. Once they've done these tests on the academic well test, they will come over that barrier we believe, and, and, and basically up their volumes to be more like ours. You know, our volumes are actually not our internal volumes; they're our third-party volumes. So, the Agnet Line, which is a, a very well-respected uh, reserve auditor, the same ones that do London Petroleum, uh, uh, known to be conservative are the ones that come up with our recovery factors. So we feel pretty confident that, uh, that we're not overestimating. Uh, and then on the other side of the basin, we will be drilling the Cunyac. That'll be one of the, the in fact, the, uh, the rig now that uh, uh, is uh, leaving Emal is actually moving over to a Cunyac. So the Cunyac uh, is one we're going to accelerate. Now uh, we'll talk a little bit about this side of the basin. This side of the basin uh, is probably gonna have more oil in place than this side of the basin. But the reservoirs are going to be a little more challenging. So um, the best reservoirs are the railroad sands, and they're going to be the, the focus of the early development. But these reservoirs here could end up being uh, just as important. Uh, we may have to drill horizontal wells to, to produce them. We may even have to do fracking to produce them. But uh, I think we're, uh, we're, we're quite excited that everything over here seems to be filled with oil. And these structures are generally three to five times the size of the structures on the other side of the basin. Uh, as far as what we're going to drill uh, next in the uh, exploration side, uh, the, the biggest thing we're going to drill is this Eton complex. So we've proven, we've proven oil here, we've proven oil here, we've proven oil here. This is the next one up in the string of pearls. But uh, it, it's broken up into three fault blocks here, and then there's a whole other series of, of prospects that look interesting if, if this is proven. The, the biggest risk of these northern ones is the oil is generated down here. Can it make it all the way up into these prospects? We think it can, but obviously, as we find oil here, as we find the, the next one is probably going to be this guy here, Eton North. Uh, if we find oil here and here, it gives us a lot of confidence that those are going to be filled. So we do. Uh, these are these are our reserve auditors' chance of success, 20 to 25 percent generally, um, as you move up here. And it's because of this long distance migration. Once we start proving. Um, reserves up here, these, these, these success rates will go up and up. Again, nice, nice looking prospect. The, the Basin Mountain Fault, well defined, good rollover, good bright spots indicating hydrocarbons. And uh, we're preparing the, the base for this, right, uh, the location for that right now. So it'll be uh, spud sometime in the second quarter. Again, on the other side of the basin, we are excited about our, our, our prospects here. Uh, I have said the reservoirs are not as good. Uh, the lower reservoirs are the Lacombe Shale sands, both the sands within the Lacombe Shale, but also the Lacombe sands themselves. They're generally about 15 to 15 percent porosity. They're generally 15 millidarcies permeability or less, so they're not as good as the Awero, uh, but they do test in hundreds of barrels a day. And uh, the Awero isn't, uh, we were not discounting the Awero. Right now we're drilling the Atuco 2 well which is basically a step out of the Atuco 1. We just skidded the rig over, and we're just testing the Atuco, the Awero and the Atuco 2 uh, well right now. So as far, as far as results of all these wells in the, uh, well, I'll just quickly talk about this. Uh, uh, you know, we had a lot of reservoir concerns when we first started this, but the, these are all the uh, Awero core data points, and this is really good reservoir here. This point here is, uh, 13 Darcy to permeability. This is this is kind of like a Johann Schwerger type uh, uh, reservoir. This is a picture of the core. You can actually blow through the core and, and feel your breath come out on the other side. So that's 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 good permeability. So if that can happen, the oil will go through there very well. So we're testing that zone right now, the zone that has this type of rock in it uh, at, at the Collis, and uh, it'll be one of the results we, we release. So. Uh, as far as press releases on our existing wells, I think we're going to probably put one out before the end of the month. Uh, the government of Kenya has asked us to try to bundle up news together, so I think there'll probably be a, a release coming out that'll talk about a 2 testing, 
uh, e-commerce testing, uh, the results of EMOM, and the results of Twiga 2. So I think all of those are, should be getting ready to release uh, about the end of this month. Um, the uh, the solo well and some of the expiration wells I think we're going to build into May and, and possibly even into June in some cases. Um, the resource report is going to be uh, one of the bigger drivers, I think. And one of the reasons I say that is because the resource report we've got now is only on these three fields. It's only on Gamia, Twiga, and Atuka. So, uh, again, it's 368 million barrels uh, versus what our partner has been telling the market, 600 million barrels. But in these three fields, there's another 480 million barrels of potential that our appraisal wells should be addressing. So we, see, we expect to see these fields uh, come up in size uh, uh, as well. But probably more importantly, if you look at the uh, ones that we're going to be adding, we're going to add Ecalis, we're going to add Egepe, we're going to add Ewoy, and most importantly, we're going to add Amosin. I think Amosin is going to be a potential um, size similar to, to Gamia um, uh, when we add that in. So, um, and then as well, we're going to be drilling these wells, which are, are going to have a, a big impact as well, but they won't be in the uh, upcoming resource upgrade. We won't have the results of any of the of the wells in purple on this uh, reserve upgrade. And what we're after is this. It's the, it's the three billion barrels that we think is possible in the local chart basin. So we're not gonna get there all the way there with, uh, with uh, the wells we've drilled to date. But uh, one thing I think you will see is the risk volumes are going to come up. As we have, you know, back, back then we've only made three discoveries, now we've made seven in a row. It's, it's hard to argue that our chance of success going forward is gonna be 30%, uh, which is basically this number here. So I think I think we're we're seeing uh, we're seeing good movement uh, on this, and I think uh, uh, we'll be uh, pleasantly surprised hopefully when we uh, when we see the resource numbers come out. But again, I think the, the sexiest thing we're going to do is to get these basin openers. So the the, the solid well is drilling right now. Um, uh, we're at about uh, 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 fifteen hundred meters in that well. And we're just getting down to where it's closed and it's, uh, it's looking for, you know, it's, uh, it, we're, we're sitting right on top of where we think the reservoir is at. So in the next week or so, this is going to be a very interesting well. Um, the other well that's about to sweat is the Shamila, as I said. This is, this is our second favorite basin. We've got two wells in here. The second one's probably going to be Samaki. We haven't just agreed with that with our partner. And then the two here in Kerry. These are the big ones. I think keep your eye on these. If we announce a discovery of this and the stock doesn't go up dramatically, then I think the market does, doesn't understand our story. Uh, why do we like the Chuba here second best? Well, number one, it's a very big basin. It's actually a little bit bigger than the Lokachar basin. It's got two big deep holes in it, one here and one here that we think are capable of generating uh, hydrocarbons. And most importantly, there's a slew of prospects here. We've got a string of pearls up here in the northern part of the basin. We've got a string of pure pearls down here in the southeastern part of the basin. Uh, we're going to be drilling this one first, Shamila, which uh, should unlock that potential. Uh, we're drilling this one second, Gardein, which will be a, a, a test of this. And then, as I said, if, if those are successful, we'll just keep that rig right there. We'll just keep drilling out these prospects. And uh, you know, the, what we like about them is they have bright spots. The bright spots are seismic amplitudes, if some of you may know and some of you may not basically are just direct indicators of hydrocarbons. Um, seismic waves can't go through oil and gas the way they go through liquids and rock. So when there's an oil and gas field, you see what's called a brightening event. You see how these markers get really bright over the top of this. And it follows the structure, and this indicates, this is to us as a direct indicator that there's hydrocarbons in there. And whether it's gas or oil, what the saturation is, what the reservoir is, that we don't know, that we have to drill. But, uh, it gives us a lot of encouragement when we see these bright spots that there actually are oil fields there. So this is the first one we're drilling, Shamila, which looks an awful lot like our Gamia Quiga type prospects. Um, one of the early ones we'll drill here is Sila, where you can see these are bright spots on every one of these, these fault blocks. And you'll see it here as well. Um, and then Gardein, which is this guy here, this is the second one we're going to drill. So uh, we're quite hopeful on this one. I think Tello, Tello guys, uh, are, uh, uh, are telling us that they think that this is a, a very low risk basin, but uh, mm -hmm. we have to drill the wells. Uh, you, you learn a lot, and you don't, but I, one thing I can guarantee you, it won't be exactly as we expect. 
could be better, could be worse, but uh, very, very seldom do I get exactly what you expect. But I think we will be very disappointed if we don't have hydrocarbons. And that's the key to this. We may not have thick reservoirs, but if we've got hydrocarbons, there will be reservoirs developed in a basin this size, and we've got enough prospects that we can move around. But, uh, the source rocks are the key. If we, do have, if we have source rocks, this is going to be a good basin. Uh, it may take a little hunting around to find where the sweet spot is. Uh, I think we got a little lucky in Lokachar that so far the, the sweet spot was the first well we drilled. We drilled what looks like maybe the best prospect in the basin uh, with our first well. But, uh, anyway, very exciting time on this. Uh, and uh, extending that, if this one works here, the, the Chubahar, this is the block we just announced that Marathon has come into. So that trend extends all the way up almost to Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. 45,000 square kilometers, a number of basins that look just like this. Uh, this is the one I think I was telling last time. We've seen a lot of oil slicks around here. We've seen good, thick source rocks and outcrop. We've been doing some field work. TOCs, total organic carbon, up to 59% of the show. But really good uh, uh, source rock uh, uh, possibility. This is where our environmental guys were out uh, doing a survey, and a farmer came up, and when they told me they were doing an environmental survey. They said, We've got a big problem. He says, uh, we keep trying to drill water wells and we keep getting this petroleum substance coming up in our water wells. Uh, we can take care of that. You know, so can you show us exactly where that's happening? So, uh, we've actually got a little shallow drilling rig that we're contracting and we're going to go out and help them find some water uh, in, that, in that area. <laughs> um, the other basin, again, which is kind of a sleeper, which is the South Curio. This one, we haven't put much uh, press out on it, but. It's, 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 it's the twin basin to the local chart. It's right next to it. Should be very similar, and it looks just the same. A big deep hole here, in the, this, this time in the north. It's got the screen of pearl prospects all along it. Uh, the first one we're going to drill is Daipa. The first one we're going to drill is Daipa here, which you see on this side of the line. Looks an awful lot like what we're looking at uh, in uh, the, the basin next door. Again, looks like there's some bright spots on it that uh, could indicate hydrocarbons. Uh, and a good slew of prospects. So we're preparing that location right now. Uh, it should spud in the second quarter. Uh, and uh, uh, again, if we prove if we prove this system working, there's a lot of rental. You know, this is what we used to call Mamba, which is the, the biggest prospect in our inventory, uh, billion barrel potential on its own. So uh, uh, once we prove this thing here, Mamba will be on the list. Uh, also, if you move to the north in this basin, this is kind of the northern tip of this basin. We've got this one called Adze, which is a little different looking prospect than most of ours. It's a simple four-way dip closed anticline, um, again with a source rock area just to the north and possibly to the south. And it's got really nice closure in, in four-way, um, and uh, we think this is the Pliocene, Miocene volcanic. So the main reservoir targets are actually going to be down in here, uh, but a good, nice rollover, and uh, we'll drill that uh, right after that. So keep your eye on those two wells. Those are, those are going to be two very interesting wells going forward. We're also drilling the first one, as I said, on Lake Katana. We've got four drillable prospects now. Kiboko is going to be the first one. It's going to actually be on land. And probably Samake is going to be the second one. It's going to be deviated from the shoreline into the lake. Um, uh, we're still deciding um, on, on the prospects. But again, good looking prospects. So this, this is Kiboko, you see the same type of geometry here, in what we call the northern string of pearls. Uh, big basin dominant fault, rolling into the fault. Again, some bright spots and flat spots indicating carbon targets. Uh, so Samaki is, uh, is, is um, on trend. Kiboko, this is really over Kaparu, uh, which is this big guy. But Samaki is right on trend with that. So uh, uh, I think this is probably going to be the one that's going next. So again, uh, the reason we like this basin is it's it's it's, it's more than three times the size of any other basin, uh, both in area and in prospectivity. Sala, uh, we drilled our, our first duster here uh, in, uh, uh, that we operated the uh, uh, Bahasi well, uh, but we actually moved over in the same block into a, a different sub basin, um, the, 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 uh, the uh, Anza Grab and the, the Bogal Deep. So, yeah. The uh, Bogal well on gas, this well here in Dobu, which was drilled in the 80s by Marathon, found a big, thick oil stain column, but it wasn't tracked. So we know we've got gas generated, we know we've got oil generated, and Sala's kind of right between those two. Big structure here, 
uh, half a million barrel type potential, 400 million on, on this slide. Uh, the real question is of oil or gas or a mix of the two. Uh, this one does have a risk of being gas, but gas is not necessarily bad in this here. I can tell you I live in Nairobi and my power goes out about 25 times a day. Um, they're looking to add 2,000 megawatts of power. It's a, it's a number one government priority. And if we can find the gas in solid or gas, we can supply all of that. So I think we'll, we'll, we, we've already talked with a number of small power producers, so there's a company called Ingreco we have in discussions with that can put up a 400 to 500 megawatt power plant in, in four to five months. The grid is actually right here uh, in Isiolo. So all we need to do is tie into the power grid there, and we may have a, a nice little power project and we can monetize that gas. They're actually burning diesel right now to generate uh, electricity. And if you do the equivalent, that's about $17 an MCF. So if you give us half of that, we've got a very good project here and a very good money maker. So if you see the results of that, uh, that's gas. You know, we, we want oil more, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, oil is always better than gas. But if we find gas here, we may be in a good spot to actually make some money on it. And of course, this is what we're after. I mean, these are the prospective resources. Uh, if you look at every one of these basins here that where we've actually been able to map resources, these are the ones we've actually shot, uh, yeah. these are the ones we've actually shot seismic on. Uh, they're all between one and two billion barrels. They're all kind of low to charge size, with the exception of our friend here, the, the Turkana Basin. That one's like three times the size. It's, it's six billion barrels of the prospective resource. So these are gross numbers, these are net numbers. So net, we're going after eight billion barrels net to us. So with the wells we've got, we'll be accessing about 5.7 billion of those eight in the next 12 months. So we're, 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 we're really getting to the point where we're gonna start understanding how many of these are real and how many of these are, are just figments of our, of our imagination. So this kind of spells out what I've been saying. This is what we're planning to do this year. So the top line there is, we're gonna drill these basin opening wells. And these are the biggest impact wells. So by the end of this year, we'll have four different basins being opened up uh, by these wells. Uh, we're also gonna drill out every prospect that we can in the Lokachar Basin. I'm hopeful that we're going to be adding a number more in here, especially those Etam North, Etam North, East, uh, Etam uh, 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 um, um, Northwest. So I think all of these here are, 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 are very low risk, uh, um, very high potential. In fact, we've already drilled the first two because they, those have been uh, discoveries. So. Uh, I think we'll see more discoveries uh, in that trend. Uh, we are going to be doing a number of appraisal wells. Uh, we've got one, one to two rigs will be full time on appraisal wells and testing. Two rigs will be full time on building out these uh, prospects. And then by the end of the year, we'd like to do that extended well test so that we understand the reservoirs better. Now, while we're doing all that, we're going to be moving the development forward too. So the, the Kenyan pipe, the Kenyan government is very keen to have this pipeline. Uh, in fact, the, the president wants first oil by 2017, which is not coincidentally the year he's up for re-election. So he's going to be pushing very hard to do what we can to uh, move that forward. But we've got a number of companies that are interested in building that pipeline, particularly Far Eastern, Jap Japanese, Chinese companies who are willing to pay for and build, they're called build, own, operate, transfer, and finance that pipeline. So uh, um, that's one objective we're pushing hard with all of our partner, and the government is pushing equally hard. So we've got a, a common, common uh, goal to get that moving. And then we're working on our long-term uh, development plan now. We'd like to have it, if, if not ready for submission, very close to ready for submission by the end of this year. Um, uh, and, I, and I think that's very doable. So it's going to be a, a very interesting year. Uh, again, uh, 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 at the end of 2014, I think we're going to have a pretty good idea what we've got in the Lokachar Basin. That, that one will be fairly sorted out. Um, and then the, the big news will be if we open up one of these new basins. Uh, as far as the development, as I talked about, the, the biggest thing is the pipeline. This is the rate limiting factor for going into development with the pipeline. We are planning to drill, build a pipeline from here to the port of Lama. Uh, Uganda is planning to join us. They've signed an MOU saying they're going to join us. Uh, they're not quite as lucky as the government of Uganda is not quite as much on side as the government of Kenya. So um, we're, we're encouraging this very simply because if they come in here, they pay roughly half the cost of our pipeline. So from a project standpoint, it's probably one to two billion of NPD that we're uh, potentially going to gain by bringing them in. 
But there will come a point where if they're not willing to, to come to the party, um, we'll have to have the party without them. Uh, because uh, delaying this project two or three years uh, will quickly erode that one to two billion dollars of MTV that we get by bringing them. So I believe they're going to join us. I think there's going to be the political pressure for them to join us uh, uh, is going to be immense. You know, they discovered oil five years before Kenya did. You know, Kenya becomes a producer before they do. And I think politically that's going to be very difficult for them. So I think I think we're 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 going ahead on the Kenya only option, but we really believe that the Kenya and Uganda option is going to work. Uh, there's also South Sudan, of course. South Sudan is having more troubles these days, and um, you know they, they potentially could be joining us, but uh, I think uh, none, of, none of the participants right now are, are looking for them to join us in the short term. So I think, uh, if anything, that may be a longer term thing before they're able to join us. Uh, as far as the budget uh, and uh, the money in the bank, um, I appreciate nobody has called me in the last few months to ask me what our money situation is. So. Uh, it's, it's a nice feeling. Uh, we had about half a billion dollars at the end of the year. Um, you know, our, our spend rate sees us going all the way to the third quarter of 2015 without having to, to raise any additional funds. As I said before, I don't think we are going to raise additional funds. I think we're going to be basically possibly in combination with Pelo to do a partnership agreement and bring in a bigger company before that time. So I think everything we're doing now is basically getting the portfolio, getting the, 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 the reserves upgraded to the point where they're going to become incredibly attractive to a, a big foreign uh, uh, major or national oil company. Um, you know, what they want is a clear path to development. Once we have the pipeline sorted out, once we've converted our resources into contingent resources or even possibly into reserves, um, that's when they're going to get interested. Now, if you look at big oil these days, uh, most oil companies are only replacing somewhere between 20 and 40 percent of their re reserves that they're producing. So they need basically projects like this. You just can't go out and find half billion, billion barrel type projects that are ready to put on uh, development. And I think I think we'll see a big line of people coming in. But again, an 800 million dollar gross budget this year is going to be a you know, there's, a, there's a lot of majors that don't have uh, exploration uh, development, uh, exploration budgets of, of that size. So, uh, spending a lot of money, only 348 of it is, is, is ours. So we'll see ourselves going into uh, next year with at least $150 million uh, uh, to go forward with. Um, one thing I like about this is the drilling. 70% of, the, the, of it is in drilling. 6% is in seismic. We are starting to see some go into development studies. Uh, there will be some significant things, particularly on the pipeline, uh, where we can start spending some money on front end engineering design and on right route surveys. But uh, I think we're in good shape. We've got the marathon farm out done now, so they just paid us uh, the money today, actually, uh, for our back costs, and we'll be able to, and they'll be carrying us going forward in the, in the Rift Basin area and in Block 12, and they're still paying our, our full carry in, uh, in Block 9. So I just want to shift for just a minute and talk about Horn. I've just got a few slides to uh, talk, talk about with Horn. You know, Horn was a company we set up a, a, a few years ago. Uh, I got clear messages, particularly from my North American shareholders, that they weren't that interested in being exposed to Somalia. You know, we like Puntland. We think geologically it's a, it's a great place to be. Um, it has been a challenge politically. I mean, we have gone in there, operated safely. We've had support from the local communities. Uh, we drilled two wells. We spent nine million dollars in Flint land, which is more than the rest of uh, industry combined in the world in, in the last decade. So we've made a good uh, investment in there, um, but we we want to grow this company. You know, right now we're just in these two blocks, and we see an opportunity, particularly in this southern rift trend down here, to put together what we, we think is a, a, a portfolio similar to Africa oil. We're not quite as early there as we are in other places, so in some cases we may have to farm into other people's acres, but there still is a, a number of blocks that are open and uh, available through either direct negotiation with the government or through bid blocks. So this is our focus. Jim Phillips, who's uh, the guy that put together a lot of the acreage in, uh, 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 in uh, our um, Kenya Ethiopia play, uh, has been working for about uh, close to a year looking at every single block in that southern trend. And now we're ready to pull the trigger on two or three opportunities. So one of them we're quite advanced on, and I think uh, we're hoping to have something done before the end of the month. 
but we see this as kind of the, the next chance to get in. And uh, for, for those of you who didn't get in early on Africa Oil, uh, this is a chance, although riskier, you know, don't, let's not kid ourselves, this is this is frontier exploration, much higher risk profile of Africa Oil, but it is a chance possibly to get in on early days of the, of the next Africa Oil. Uh, we do like Somalia, and I'll talk a little bit about that. We are planning to keep moving forward in that, and the, the team will be the same team. We won't need to go out and hire a bunch of people to run the company. So Jim Phillips will likely move over to become president of, of Horn. I'll still remain as chairman. But all the same people that work in Africa Oil will, will, will be working in Horn as well. So the RIF trend there is also quite interesting. The, the RIF basins here are of the same order of magnitude as the, as the ones that we see up in Kenya. There's three main RIFs here. The Tanganyika Basin, the Rukwa Basin, and the Nyasa or Malawi Basin uh, in the south. So those are the three we've been targeting. They're all the same age. Uh, they're the, 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 what, what's been proven here in uh, Uganda. This RIF is basically this part of Africa is trying to split off. That's what a RIF is. A RIF is basically trying to split off. You know, here it's successful, like Gulf of Aden. You know, the Saudi Peninsula actually was successful and split away. The uh, uh, Red Sea saying that is a successful risk. This is what they call failed risks. So it tries to break apart, but unfortunately there's a big granite massif around Lake Victoria and it just couldn't break all the way through. So it's what's called a failed risk. But what does happen on these failed risks, you can map these by just by looking at these lakes. And those lakes are what's important to us. Those lakes are where the nice, big, thick source rocks form. So if you go today into Lake Tanganyika and you drop a piston core on the bottom, you'll find 200 meters of this nasty, black, organic, smelly sludge, which those geologists are really attractive. Because 12 years, million years from now, that's going to be buried down to about 5,000 feet, and it's going to turn into oil, and it's going to be a great oil source rock. So these lakes have persisted really since the Miocene, so about 12 million years. And the key is finding which one of these basins, back then, 12 million years ago, um, had that same conditions that Lake Tanganyika has today. If you go late today in Lake Rook in the Rukwa area, the, the lake's only 400 feet. The source rocks there are not going to be any good. So uh, that's, what, that's what our goal is here, is trying to figure out which one of these basins 12 million years ago looked more like Lake Tanganyika than Lake Rukwa. And then Lake Malawi is the same, deep water. And one of the problems in the Southern Rift is that it is very deep water, like Lake Tanganyika, it's 2,000 feet deep. Um, to access most of the prospects there, you're going to have to bring in a semi-submersible rig, chop it up into pieces, transport it over. They're thinking of 150 to maybe $200 million a well. We're not going to do that. I can, I can assure you that uh, we're looking at blocks you can drill from the onshore or in some of the shallow parts. You know, on each end, there's shallow parts. This is a shallow block. Uh, on each side there, there's one thing you can reach. So that's what we're really looking at, and there is a, a great amount of opportunity there. So now we're, uh, we're, we're getting fairly far along, you know, watch this space. Uh, uh, if, if we do um, land this deal, we will go out and uh, recapitalize that company, and uh, we'll be raising some money associated with that. Uh, but we still like Somalia. Um, I, I just Monday met with the new president of Somalia, a uh, very interesting guy, he's a PhD in economics, he's got an MBA at Harvard, uh, he's a U.S. citizen, uh, taught at uh, Niagara Falls University. So he's very switched on and very interested in getting the oil business moving forward. So we drilled these two wells here. Although we didn't find oil, we found a lot of good uh, uh, shows. We found a lot of good reservoirs. We found seals. We found source rocks. We found everything that you need to find oil. So we're quite encouraged. What we want to do is go on the other side of the basin, on the deep side of the basin, and do like we did in Gambia, to look for these basin dominant fault traps. We've seen some evidences on that existing size. Um, this block here, the Nagal block, we really like that it's got a border dispute. Um, but the politics are improving. The, the, new, the new president was elected without security issues. Uh, he has very close ties with the central government. He used to be the prime minister of the central government. So as opposed to the, the old president, he is ready to talk with the central government. He's ready to talk with all parties to try to get this political stalemate uh, ironed out. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the central government has improving relations with the West, the UK, the US, all joining in there, primarily to fight Al-Shabaab and, and, and stop that. Uh, so I think we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, problems. 
And uh, really, uh, I think we're getting to the point where all parties are ready to sit down and let, let's, let's get a solution to this and let's get out there and operate. We're happy to talk with other permit holders. We're even happy to talk with older permit holders as long as we can get a deal where we can get in and get back to work. So uh, I think right now I'm more optimistic than I've ever been that uh, there is going to be a solution found and we're going to be able to get back to work, hopefully within the next six months. Again, um, uh, I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again because it, it is our single most important thing that we're going to have to do going forward here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite proud of the efforts that we do on, on, on community uh, uh, engagement. Uh, I think we've built ourselves a good reputation. Uh, some of you may have know, known that we uh, brought a group of uh, uh, people for CSR from uh, Nordea and from Folk Sundown, and uh, we were quite pleased with the outcome of that. I think they gave us a, a very good endorsement of, of the way we're conducting our business down there. And I think that's the open uh, some doors to some of the other good Swedish funds coming in. Uh, most of you know we are moving up to the big board in Sweden and in Toronto. The Toronto listing we hope will be done um, in late in March, uh, early April, and it should be somewhere around four to six weeks after that we, we get the uh, Swedish listing. And I think uh, um, you know, not only is this paying off for us uh, on the ground, uh, and we're getting a lot of support from most of the communities, I think it may also help us uh, expose the, the company to some of the bigger Swedish funds uh, who have very high principles on, on how and where they're going to invest. So uh, I think that's, that's, that's working well. Um, again, it's a constant challenge. It's, it's never going to be finished. It's something that we will have to keep working on as we go. But our social license to operate is the single most important thing that we have in our company. If we don't do this right, it doesn't matter what else we do right. So uh, we do spend a lot of time and effort on this. Uh, I won't go through this uh, in detail. You all know the Lundin Group and the, the value we created. Uh, you know, these are now just the oil companies here. Uh, we've gone from 128 million up to 15 billion in the last 12 years. Uh, an average share price increase of 39x. Um, hopefully, I come back here to, uh, next time. We'll put the horn there at the bottom. We'll start to see the uh, same type of run up in horn. But I think the the, the message is here that uh, you know we have risk in our in our stocks, but it's risk versus reward. We're not going to get these type of returns without having some type of risk. Uh, and I think corn is, 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 is going to be at the higher end of that risk profile, but it is an opportunity to get in uh, early days on one of these companies back down in this, in this type of range as opposed to having to, to get in uh, at the later time. I think to summarize, uh, you know, I think we, we do have the best acres portfolio in East Africa for sure. And one might argue we have one of the best acres portfolios in the world. Um, I think the uh, Vokachar Basin is going to be the, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, each, each time we drill wells, we're going to be finding more oil. I think we're going to be finding better reservoirs, thicker reservoirs, especially after we shoot the 3D and kind of start seeing these things on the 3D. Uh, and we expect to see it uh, to, to, to keep improving. Uh, again, very active here. Um, uh, we, are, we aren't going to be releasing every well individually. The government of Kenya has basically asked us to bundle up our uh, releases and not, you know, because every time we release, they, they get 20, 20 people calling them and reporters, so I think we're going to try to coordinate with Tala and the government and do maybe a, once, once every six weeks or every two months, uh, bundle up some things together and, and put it out. Um, but keep your eye on this. You know, I would say if you wake up in the morning and sign on and you see a, a big discovery at Shamila, you know, hit the buy button you know, you know, before you have your morning coffee because it may be too late if you don't. So anyway, I, I think uh, we're very pleased the way things are going. We, we, we appreciate all the support we've got, particularly in the Swedish market. Our stock is moving to Sweden, uh, as uh, several other Lundin stocks have done. Uh, we do about 75% of our volume now in Sweden. Uh, I'm very pleased to have Nordea as our, one of our largest shareholders now. They're, they're continuing to add to their position, and I think they're, they're quite supportive. And uh, uh, you know, we look forward to a great year, and uh, uh, we look forward to uh, uh, you know, moving this project and finding new basins and uh, I, think, uh, I think there's still there's an awful lot of upside in this stock. Uh, I'll put these up, uh, you, know, you, you know our team, I think you, some of you have uh, met other members of our team, but this is really the key. We've got a group of people, I've been working with some of these guys almost 30 years, and I think they're, they're, they're the key to building Africa oil. 
and they're going to be the key if we're, uh, if we're successful in the horn as well. So I'll leave it to you to uh, go through the cautionary statements uh, uh, at your leisure, and uh, I think we have uh, some time for some uh, questions as well. Om det finns några frågor så kan ni räcka upp handen så finns det mikrofon och hugga tag i er. Vi vet att det kommer finnas frågor så det är bättre att vi tar dem nu än efteråt. Crystal clear. Yeah, I've got a question on uh, you and Sato are talking about uh, Cuba Harry and South Carolina oh. on the most interesting basis like uh, South Lothar But why are you not talking about North Lothar with the same excitement? Isn't North Lothar the most similar to South Lothar that we've already proven big time? So what's wrong with North Lothar is the question. Uh, I think by North Lothar you're talking about uh, everything else. Everything else North of uh, Eton basically. So North, North, what we call North Lothar is this part here of the Lothar Basin. And there is one well we're going to drill called Talisi. The problem with the, or the, I'd say the concern of North Lothar <coughs> is, if you look at, uh, uh, I think it's just on the EY. If you look at the EY, the, the source rock kitchen is here. That's the proven source rock kitchen where the oil is. Then you have to go up over this big ridge, and then you go back down. You can just see a hint right here that it's starting to go back down, but it's a separate source area. So it doesn't get as deep as this one. And that's our concern in the North Lothar Basin, that uh, we may not get deep enough. If you're asking about Turkana Basin, Turkana Basin, uh, which is, you know, you're, you're correct, this is, this is our biggest basin with our biggest resources. Um, it's a little more complicated. If you look at this seismic line, it's much more dramatic, the faulting there. You see the, some of the reservoirs come all the way up to the surface there. This is because it's the intersection of these two trends. Uh, so this is the Cretaceous trend here, which goes all the way up into Sudan. This is the tertiary trend. This area here is right where they basically intersect. So it's structurally, it's more complex. This thing has gone down, it's come back up, it's gone back down, and it, 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 the, you generally don't like that with oil. You know, you're, when you're moving things around, you have a chance to spill. So that's the negative. The positive is it's got very deep cooking pots. This area here is the deepest, thickest shale that we see in the entire basin. So it should have oil. It should be generating oil. So uh, we're not ignoring that one. It's a little more difficult. Uh, it's, it's up in, this is the cradle of humanity here. So uh, the Turkana boy, the, uh, the, the fossil, the, 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 the uh, um, the fossil that's basically the missing link between humans and, and their, their, their ancestors was found right here. So we have to be very careful and very sensitive the way that we uh, uh, explore up here. We're working very close with Richard Leakey and the Leakey Foundation to make sure we're doing this in the right way. But it does have great potential. Uh, being offshore, we can, we can reach this group of prospects right here from the onshore. We can't reach this. So we'd have to find a way to drill offshore to drill some of those prospects, which again is going to be a, a bit of a challenge. The water depth is only about 40, 50 meters, but we're probably going to have to build some type of jack-up barge or some type of jack-up drilling uh, unit, and, and it's going to be quite expensive. So we want to drill these wells first and prove that the petroleum system works. Then we can start looking at the offshore. We do have a little more time on this one than any other permit. Uh, it was one of the last ones signed, so we've got about two extra years on this permit compared to the other ones. So. Uh, we, we can be a little bit more patient on this one than the others. Keith, regarding Ekala, we're just about finishing the second test right now. Okay. And how many tests will there be? I think we're just going to probably just do the two. Okay. So that one may be, uh, that one, uh, and when I said we're, we're bundling stuff together to release, the Ekala's test will be one, do the two. Uh, Ituko and Imong, Ituko 2 and Imong. I think by the end of the month we'll, we'll, we'll have that finished. Finns det några fler frågor? Jag vet att det brukar vara väldigt mycket frågor till Keith efteråt, så att det vore bättre om vi kunde ta dem när vi alla är samlade och alla får höra svaren på dem. Uh, vi har inte haft så mycket tid efteråt heller. Så några fler frågor kanske? 
Ah, meu amor, we're 38, 300 meters there, so we're going to go to 3,500 meters. Um, probably the more important thing uh, with the Quran is what our neighbors are doing. So the Chinese uh, have leased all the blocks around us. They've announced they're going to be building an oil and a gas pipeline. Um, they've, uh, not, they've said they're going to be bringing six rigs in to us to work full time. So uh, I, I would say so far what we announced and what we've seen is not really a big surprise on what we were expecting. You know, they're, they're tighter reservoirs. There is a lot of oil and gas in place. But as a standalone project, it's going to be difficult. I think we're going to need some help from our, our neighbors to, to make that a commercial project. Om det inte är några fler frågor så uh, finns det förtärning här efteråt och vi stannar kvar lite tag. Uh, tack så mycket för att du kom allihopa och så blir det en presentation av Locara Diamond som jag sa då, den 24 mars uh, klockan 18.30 på Nice.